Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is Friday and I am at the Cary Cliffs at Brayhead. Ta-da! Oh, <laughs> here we are. It's nice, huh? Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel right here with Luna and today we're going to go ahead and do a whip and chat and it's going to be the kind of whip and chat where I talk about my personal life and the goings on. Uh, not a tag video so if you're not interested in that kind of thing I guess I'll see you all in my next video. But for those of you who would like to get a little bit of an update, I haven't done this in a little while, so uh, yeah, it's kind of overdue a little bit. Uh, but before we get into the life stuff, I just want to show you what I'm working on and talk about it real quick. So this is the brand new release from Diamond Art Club. This is Pocahontas, um, which is called, on their website, it's called The Daughter of Peace. So once that becomes available... I will be linking it in the description below, but when I put this video out today, uh, it actually will only be available to Ruby and Diamond level VIP members on Diamond Art Club's website. So if you are a Ruby or Diamond, Diamond Art Club member, <laughs> sorry, I say that five times fast, uh, you should get an email at some stage Saturday, uh, which is today, the day I'm recording this, and uh, hopefully, I think by the time that this video is released, that that video, that email would have already gone out. But for everyone else, if you're not a Ruby or Diamond level member of Diamond Art Club's website, then that will become available for you on Monday. And if you're curious about how to become a Ruby or Diamond level member on their website, if you go to diamondartclub.com and you scroll down just a little bit, then a little kind of pinkish purple star pops up in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, that happens on your mobile and on the desktop website as well. And Basically, you just create an account and every time that you purchase a Diamond Art Club painting, you get points that go towards this status. And once you achieve that status, then you get new releases um, before others because you've shopped with them before and saved up, you know, spent so much money with them, essentially. It's a rewards program. I would highly recommend earning rewards, even if you only buy from them like once a year or something. It's still it's still worth going in and having a poke around because they do have you know quite quite a few good perks. And I'm not going to rant about it here because I'm sure that most of the people that watch my channel do know about it. But if you don't and you're curious about it, I would recommend just go to DiamondArtClub.com and have a look. Now this piece was sent to me for um, preview, basically, sneak peek, <laughs> um, and I am just over the moon with it so far. It's really, really nice. Um, when we when we finish this whip and chat, I'm going to pull back so you can see how much I've gotten done today, but um, it is, if I look at it real quick, a 42 by 125, which is massive, as I say in my household, mahoosive. And it has four ABs, which really took me by surprise. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, I did not expect there to be that many because in the past I think I've only had maybe a maximum of two. I can't remember two or three, and uh, yeah, just amazing. <laughs> They've really kind of pumped it up a bit. You know what I mean? But um, anyway. This this painting, I'm just excited, so excited to to do, and and I love these earthy tones. To be honest, I love anything that isn't like <laughs> just black and orange at this stage. But um, I will finish my Ever Moment very soon. Um, I actually would like to dedicate this weekend to trying to get a big chunk of that finished because I do have to have it ready in less than a month because I'm going on vacation. Woohoo! 
<laughs> All right, so um, if you want to know more about the painting, please check the description of this video. And from now on, I'm just going to get right into my whip and chat because i got a lot to talk about. It's been a while. Uh, I'm going on vacation at the end of August this year, and I'm going back to Virginia to see my family and friends, and then I'm also going to Toronto to a wedding of my friend, and yeah, it's, I'm just, I can't believe it's less than a month away now. Is it less than a month or exactly a month? It could be exactly a month away at this stage. Um... But, yeah, I'm just, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Uh, what, which one do I want to do now? I'm going to do, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Something just fell over. 38, 38.18. So, getting ready for that, just talk to Hubby about, like, whether we should get serious about packing um, and he's like, no, don't be silly. It's a month away. And I'm like, uh, yeah, but I hate packing like the night before a trip, but I always end up doing that. <laughs> so I'm seriously thinking about it. You know, what am I going to need? What's the weather going to be like? I want to pack light because I have things that I want to bring back with me. I always go shopping when I go home because I, I know how to shop in the stores that I grew up with and you know but over here in Ireland it can be more challenging because I'm not so familiar with the shops so like for example and I don't know if this is just me so if anybody else is an expat and you live in a different country than you grew up in maybe you can comment down below and let me know if you're like this. So every time I visit home, I bring a virtually empty suitcase <laughs> and then I go out within a day or two of arriving and I buy things like underwear and bras because I know exactly which shop I like to buy them from. And no, we don't have Victoria's Secret or anything like that here. So yeah, I love going back and being like, oh, I know exactly which, which, um, model I need and such like that. Two seconds. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry. Husband decided to come in at that very moment and go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I paused for privacy's sake. Anyhow, um, I've changed the camera angle as well because I know that someone asked me if I could get a more close-up view of like the symbols and the placement and everything, but it can be a little bit awkward, I'm just going to say, um, filming my hand as well. And I don't want it to go in and out, which it seems like it's going to do. So I apologize if you're actually watching the video. There's not much else I can do. So anyway, as I was thinking about what I was talking about, I was thinking about foreign service crafter. Where is she? <laughs> Have I just missed her videos? Um, because speaking of expats, um, yeah, what happened? Uh, miss you girlfriend. Have you moved to Germany yet? So yes, I am really, really excited uh, to go shopping <laughs> and I'm going to pick up a few things that I've sent to my grandparents address in the States and some of those things are like pens and diamond paintings and things like that. So excited to grab those things. Um, in case you're wondering, I am switching off between this pen, which is my handmade diamond painting pen from the group on Facebook, and then also using my own crystal stylus pen, uh, which is available in my Etsy shop. So I've just kind of been jumping back and forth, but I was doing a lot of multi-placing on, um, while I was waiting, you know, patiently waiting for hubby to get out. Anyway, uh, hmm. What else was I going to talk about? So yeah, vacation is coming. I'm really excited. Um, there are talks of meeting other viewers and YouTubers while I am home. But 
I am kind of worried because I only have a limited amount of time, so I can't meet everybody who wants to meet with me. Um, I apologize for that, but I just don't, I don't have the time. I need to spend time with my family. And so I will give you details if, if there's going to be like a public meetup, but I don't know if anyone who watches me will be able to go. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I will do my best. Um, maybe like a coffee shop thing, you know, that would be nice. But hubby will be there as well. So <laughs> I hope you'll be excited to meet him too. He likes to stay private. So I would ask that no one take photos with him. He'll take photos of us. How about that? Anyway, I, I don't really, it kind of gives me the creeps to think about like being um, a celebrity of some sort. Um, so I'm very much not a celebrity. I am the most like introvert, introverted extrovert that you'll ever meet. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, speaking of that, I have had to go through my Facebook and delete all of the friend requests that were sent to me. I apologize, but as again, I'm going to state again, uh, I'm not accepting friend requests any longer from people who know me on YouTube or Facebook groups or anything like that, unless I know you personally and we build rapport and that kind of thing. I'm just not, um, I just, I, I have a private Facebook for my family and my friends. And then I have a public Facebook page for YouTube. And I would appreciate if everybody understands that I'd like to keep them separate. So please don't feel personally offended if I have declined your Facebook friend request because I have deleted everyone's um, unless I know you and I talk to you a lot or if I request it from you then that's different you know uh, there's a lot of you and only one of me and I've already I've kind of felt the strain of only having so many hours in a day before I got on my medication, and now that I'm on my medication, I actually feel a lot smoother. I don't feel so um, worried about hurting everyone's feelings anymore, uh, which I hope people don't take that the wrong way, but um, I think I was just like really, really paranoid there's no other way for me to describe that. And now I don't feel so paranoid, which is awesome. <laughs> um, I feel like I kind of had to grow a backbone, I guess you could call it, um, for that sort of thing. Anyway, um, this, this is my Archer's Arts tray. It's really, really nice. Um, I like it because when I shake drills, I shake really hard and they sometimes fall out of the normal trays, especially the big white tray. So this is a good um, alternative if you need help with that sort of thing. But for me, um, I only really use this in the living room, but this was already full of drills that I was using on this canvas from last night, la la la. Anyway. <sighs> I get sidetracked really easy. Um, yeah, so please don't be offended. Uh, if you take it personally and you want to message me, then please do. I mean, I will explain to you why, um, but there's, it's honestly just for my own privacy and sanity. Um, I already get so many uh, messages from viewers and subscribers and it can be hard to field them all alongside my normal regular life stuff which I'm gonna be honest I don't really use Facebook that often in my real life so diamond painting has kind of taken over Facebook for me everything that I see on my Facebook is nothing but diamond painting now uh, which isn't a bad thing. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, I wish I could see, you know, this person's post. But then it reminds me that I can just go and look at them, right? Because um, the Facebook, sorry, the Facebook algorithm is all messed up. Anyway, 
So where is, oh, that's a cover minder. The cover minder is, sorry, it's this little magnet, which, yeah, there we go. Uh, it says coffee, and this is from Tiny Pufferfish over on Etsy. So, oops, <laughs> I'm all full of dropsies today. So if you want to check her out, um, Tiny Pufferfish, all one word on Etsy. She has super cute stuff on her Etsy shop. What is this? a little piece of something probably pizza because I had pizza the night before last and I wasn't exactly being <laughs> the most careful about it let's be honest um okay let's back up a little bit what's going on in my life all right I have I have slimmed down to once a week at the hotel and this week I'm working twice. So I'm just about to go into work here in a little while, which it is, let me have a look. Oops, I just zoomed you out. Okay, I can't actually look at what time it is. That's probably not a good thing. Uh, oh, there it is, 1.30. Okay, so I'm zooming back in a little bit. It's 1.30 and I have to be at work at three. So we don't have a very long time. I really wanted to get you a personal whip and chat um, recorded today because I can quickly edit this together and post it up on YouTube while I'm at work. And that's the only time that I really upload anything to my channel, which is why the uploads are quite sporadic sometimes, especially right now, because my internet is so slow that I cannot upload a video from my house. I have to go and steal internet <laughs> from someone else, which is normally my place of work or my brother-in-law. But anyway, I digress. The point is that I have slimmed down a lot and I feel much happier because teaching is my favorite thing to do. But unfortunately, it is going to end soon. I don't know if next week is my last week or the week after will be my last week, but it will be very soon and I'm sad. I do not want to go. All right, I'm going to use this tray for trash because I can see holes, a few holes. And I just saw another one, there it is. That's it for now, okay. So, yeah, I don't really upload unless I have internet connection there. And so sporadic uploads, but that's a good thing because it's allowed me to kind of have a real life <laughs> um, instead of only thinking about YouTube. I was like eating, breathing, sleeping. Everything was all about my YouTube channel and it was a bit overwhelming. I did it to myself, of course I did, but like my brain helped me do that. Um, so I guess we could talk about the medicine because I do get quite a lot of messages about that. Um, I don't want to share too much right now with everybody because it's really personal. <laughs> Um, but basically I do feel a lot better and that's the main thing is that I wanted to not feel so lost. Like I couldn't turn off the voices. I couldn't focus on one thing at a time. I felt like I was pulled in like a thousand directions at once some days and then other days I was like, wow, um, utterly useless. You know what I mean? But now, and now I, I don't know if this is a combination of the fact that I'm working at a place that I, I really love and I find great joy and purpose with this place. Um, I'm sure that's most of it. I'm not going to deny that because I don't think that the medication can make you feel that. Um, it, I've, I've appreciated things a lot more since I started 
the medication. And I've kind of, I'm, I'm not taking things for granted. Um, I'm not sure if I did that before, but I'm really aware <laughs> that things are really good. And I'm kind of sad that it's all going to be over soon, which I always feel that way. But I'm trying to stay as optimistic as I can because, you know, life is about swings and roundabouts. You're not always going to feel like you're on top of the world unless you're like, I don't know, maybe you're like pumping uh, testosterone and <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, I, I don't mean to like make judgments on people or anything, but yeah, I, I was at a stage at one point in my life where I was, um, I was working out so much that I lost my period and um, like the endorphins were so high that I, I felt like I was just on top of the world all the time, but it was really unhealthy what I was doing. So I don't recommend overdoing anything really. Uh, anyway, uh, really, really fun, satisfying job. And it had been like the last, the last two weeks have been really challenging because we've had a few students who've decided that they were going to steal money from other students. It happened in the first week and that student returned the money when we had a group assembly. Uh, he, you know, the all of the students were brought together in the main area and told what happened. And most of them were shocked. And I'm sure that that kid was shocked too. I don't know how, how their brains work, but like how they think they're going to get away with it. <laughs> it's just, I don't understand. But anyway, like it happened again the following week after everyone had been warned and the warning was basically bring us the money and we will not call the cops and you know if you bring us the money you can stay here we won't send you back to your home so the kid did it he brought it back and apologized and everything and we accepted that and moved on you know and I kind of treated it like, you know, I, I didn't want the kid who was only 14. I didn't want him to feel like I was picking on him. So, you know, I didn't, I never really treated him any different than I had before. Then it happened again. And another student stole money from another kid, you know, from his wallet. So... We had to have another assembly and this time we had to say, well, you know, you're going to have to return the money and fess up um, or else we will also conduct a police investigation. Uh, but what we didn't say was, and even if you turn in the money, you're going to be sent home. So we didn't want to freak out the kid or all the kids. But all the kids kind of got a little bit creeped out. And, um, you know, it, it, the, the feeling in the school was really, really bad. I mean, I've never seen it like that before. Never had this happen before. So we find out with the process of elimination and also a bit of hearsay, I'd say. Hearsay, I'd say. That's kind of funny to say. Anyway, um, that it was this one child. And the sad thing was that he actually came with one of our teachers uh, from his school. Like his, his father, his own father, is a student of a teacher, an English teacher at the school. So it was really awkward. And he lied about it. He got caught in the lie and um, 
it was understood that he basically threw his friends under the bus to try to uh, remove the blame from himself, which is typical, you know, teenager behavior, except that he still didn't confess even when the evidence was presented against him. And so because he kept lying and not confessing, we had to send him home. And we decided that, and even though, even though people were really upset about it, we did not send the first kid home because he did what was asked of him when it was asked and he apologized and didn't do it again. So yeah, um, there's a few popping drills here. I don't know if it's, it's probably my placement to be honest, but look, and there's some of this as well in there. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, so we had to deal with that this week, which kind of brought everybody down a bit. Um, so let's just say it's been, it's kind of been a really weird week. And I hope that the last week is going to be the best week since both of those kids are now going home. And the ones that are left, sorry, I have a little bit of something on this drill. Put that in the tray. Okay. There aren't that many trash drills, to be honest. Um, so those kids are going home, or they've gone home. The, the, the first one who confessed was scheduled to go on Sunday. It's Saturday, so he still has, he's still here, he, technically, I just won't see him. Um, but he came to me after class one day and was like on the verge of tears saying, you know, I don't want to go home, I want to stay. Uh, does this mean because he's going home, I have to go home? And I was like, no, we want you to stay. We want you to enjoy your time here. You did what was asked of you. You didn't you know, you did a bad thing, but you apologized and you learned from it and you're not going to do it again. You know, we all make mistakes and we gave you a second chance. But really what we were doing was warning everybody, don't do this or we will have to file charges. And, you know, we all have to get your parents involved. And, you know, what, what goes from a really nice, relaxed English holiday, English language learning holiday becomes a really stressful inquiry of theft like nobody wants that now today is Saturday and last night we had a disco and I'm really hoping I haven't looked at the messages because we have a you know like a whatsapp group for work I haven't looked at the messages but I am kind of worried that maybe some kids could have been drinking alcohol last night. That's a worry that we always have. But like, now I'm going to say it and I'm going to sound so like antiquated, but like kids these days <laughs> are crazy. Like they're like, I don't know, but all teenagers push boundaries and they all kind of want to show off to their friends. That's nothing new. Let me take some water. That's nothing new at all. But like, because they have access to the internet, and I mean like, I'm talking internet like as in, they have everything at their fingertips. They have, they have knowledge and then they have false reality. I think what I've been trying to encourage my students to do is to get rid of that false reality because really all it can do is haunt you. Let's take YouTube for example. Um, there are quite a lot, let's not lie, there are quite a lot of creators on YouTube in general who are fake as F, right? They they create content for money and they put on a persona 
which could be a good persona, like a, a nice person persona, or it can be a bad one. Um, there are several of them out there too. But really what it's about is it's about views. You know, how many views do you get on your, on your video? And I have overheard my students talk about this. You know, they're, ta they're watching these other teenage YouTubers or older adult ones and they talk about how many views they get, as if, you know, views is a sign of popularity. What I don't think they seem to realize is that, you know, that popularity can change a person. It can, it can turn you from who you really are to someone you don't want to be really quick. And I mean, if you've ever watched like a Shane Dawson documentary or something, you might have seen a few pretty high profile YouTubers admit to doing things that they didn't like to do because they wanted to get views for money or for popularity. Who knows? Anyway, um, it's really important to me that I teach these kids that life is more than that. I mean, honestly, the internet could go down tomorrow and anybody who's built a career on their online per persona is screwed. You know, they, they're going to get nothing. They're going to have nothing. They're, and then they're going to look around and be like, Oh, um, you know, and I need that lesson every once in a while too. Cause it's very easy for me to sit here and make videos and upload them and you know, I like, I like that and I like connecting with everyone here. You guys are awesome, but sometimes I have to remind myself that I have a life outside of YouTube and I have to nurture the friendships that I have with people around me. So I would definitely recommend anybody watching this today, make time for your real friends too. It's so easy to only stay online and like, I don't want to say hide because that's the wrong, that's the wrong term. Uh, you can find your people online. You can find the people that you, that you like the most, that have the, exactly the same interests as you. You can like go gaga over fandoms together. Um, yeah, you, you don't have to have arguments or you don't have to have awkward situations like you would in real life. And I mean, it could be as simple as like, yeah, having to share a room with someone in a, in a hostel, you know, and cause that can be uncomfortable. Um, but anyway, what I'm trying to get at is at the end of the day, what you're really going to have is the people that you surround yourself with in real life. And if something does happen where we do lose the internet, which I know I'm kind of a crazy conspiracy theorist, and I will fully admit that, but I don't think that we are long away from what some people think is the end of the world. Um, but the end of civilization, I just smiled because... Now that I've said that out loud, I think people are going to think I'm crazy. But yeah, I, I don't think that we're that far away from something like bad happening and not having internet anymore, <laughs> aka why I'm saving all these diamond paintings. <laughs> okay, I just a little bit, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, we have to we have to reach out to each other as a community first. And, and be, nurture real friendships. I think that's the part of being a YouTube creator that is the most difficult for me. Just being honest. Is, is balancing real life and online life. So I'm really going to try my best to continue to follow the path that I've created for myself this summer. 
while part of me is sad that I haven't been a part of things, like this weekend there's the dp -athon. And I apologize in advance, by the way, if this gets uploaded and someone is live, I am by no means trying to take anyone away from a live video. I don't think that that's a real thing, by the way. I'm pretty sure that's just um, people trying to make you believe that that's a thing. Like if I'm in a live, I'm fully committed to watching that live. <laughs> so even if even if um, Mrs. Coffee uploaded a video, sorry, Mrs. Coffee, I probably would finish the live first because it's real life, you know? Anyway, um, yes. So I talked about the student. What else happened? Uh, oh yeah, you saw in the intro to this that I was at Bray Head, me and my messy hair. Um, please don't judge me. I had done, so Friday, Friday, yesterday. <sighs> Fridays, we always do this like show. We're not a performing arts school, but the director kind of acts like we are. <laughs> no offense if she ever sees this, but... We aren't a performing arts school, but she kind of wants us to be. Uh, so at the last minute, we had the students create, choose a song, uh, do a dance, and perform it live on stage. And so we spent like three, no, two and a half hours practicing this dance Friday morning with must have been 55, 60 students. And yeah, um, it actually went pretty well considering it was so last minute and we didn't have that much time to practice and they wanted to change things at the last minute. I was like, girls, relax. <laughs> it's too late. Let's just go with what we have. So yeah. All right. That is as much of this color as I want to do. Let's change um, so yes, awesome, awesome day Friday at the school, but I was so shattered by the, it, it was basically Zumba, you know Zumba, like where you exercise while dancing, and so, yeah, me, I am not the world's fittest person. Uh, so <laughs> it was interesting. Um, I practiced with them. I practiced for a good, I don't know. I don't know how many times I danced that dance. I think it must've been like six or seven times before we got on stage. And then we all got on stage and I did it with them. So they would feel less nervous about it. And I am not the most coordinated person and I'm sure I messed up a few times and whatever but um they did a really good job and I was really really proud of them doing that but I was I was so tired after that that I wanted to just sleep but I was scheduled to go in an after school activity and it was supposed to be a walk around the ring forts again. And I think if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen pictures from the, these ring forts. They're beautiful. Really, really lovely place to go. Um, especially when you don't have children with you. <laughs> no offense to anyone with children, but yeah. Hashtag not a mom. Um, yet. But, um, so... They changed, whoops, excuse me. They changed it at the last minute, which was great because my ankle was like screaming at me. You know, the ankle I was talking about that I, yeah, broke the tendons on in Morocco? Same ankle. Um, it was screaming at me. I put on my brace. They said, oh, you're not going to go on the walk to the ring forts. You're going to do Bray Head instead. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. Because Bray Head is 
a peninsula walk. You just walk in a straight line up, well, not directly up, but up the side of a mountain to the end of the peninsula. And then there's these beautiful, gorgeous cliffs. And what time is it? 39. Okay, I'll try to remember. Let me just, no, I don't have any paper. 39 minutes. Okay, I'm going to try to include like some video footage here that is muted because it's very windy there, but wow. I mean, the color of the water is insane. Um, and you know, I had told my students that I took there this, a lot of people for the longest time considered this place to be the end of the world. And they couldn't imagine that, that there was anything more past this point, you know, um, and you know, it wasn't until they started getting invaded that they knew that there must be something out there. They just don't know how. Um, so yeah, I just kind of weaved a bit of a story there for them. And then we walked up there and then you can walk all the way to the end of that peninsula. And I encouraged the students to do it. So I did it as well. <laughs> you know how funny that is? Like, you're like, yeah, go ahead. And they're like, come with us. And I'm like, uh, okay. So I went, um, and it was the first time that I've ever been to that, the far end of this peninsula. So it was magic. Amazing. The place where I, I filmed the intro and yeah, I just, I had a really great time. And then we had to walk all the way back. So I did all the Zumba in the morning. And then I walked the entire length of the Brayhead Peninsula. And then walked all the way back to the bus. Then I had to wait around for the buses because James had taken the car to work. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. I feel like the story is going on forever. But essentially, I came home. I sat down with this diamond painting. I think I diamond painted for half an hour, half an hour, 45 minutes. I watched the rest of Heike's Whip and Chat from earlier this week. And then I watched something, one of Diamond Art Addiction's videos, I think. And then, oh yeah, it was the, the, her live. And then I watched, with the giveaway, and then I watched, oh no, 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 I think that's where I left it, because I was just so tired at that stage that I, like, put this to the side, <laughs> and I tried to close my eyes while I was in the recliner, but it wasn't working. I went in the back, in my room, took off my pants, and I committed to a nap. And when I commit to a nap, I can't just like say, okay, this is going to be 20 minutes. No, no. This is going to be three to four hours of sleep. I cannot just nap for a short amount of time. It won't, it never happens. So, oh, too many drills. Oops. Okay. See, so, yeah. uh, that happened. Let me take a sip of water. That was at six o'clock. I was supposed to go back into town and meet my coworkers for a drink at 10, 1030, something like that. I slept all the way through. James came home at half 10, I think it was. And I didn't even really know what time it was. He was just like, hi, I'm home. Oh, where are you? <laughs> And I was like, what? And then he was like, oh, you're asleep. Uh, okay, good night. <laughs> and he went into the living room watching or playing video games or watching TV. I don't know which. And I just passed out. I was gone for the whole night. So I slept for 14 hours straight. And I really needed it because my muscles were so sore, y'all. I was so sore. I'm getting old, but, uh, anyway, that was last night and I'm kind of glad I got the sleep. 
because I have to work soon. In fact, hang on, let me just check the time. Two, okay, we're still good. Excuse me, good stuff, because there's other things. So my grandfather is doing pretty well. Uh, the, the cancer has seemed to have stalled or stopped. I don't know how you want to say it. It's not remission, it's just just stopped, which is great. And he feels really good, um, which is the main thing. We just want him to feel happy and, you know, energetic. And the reason being because he was just, when he was doing his chemo, he was not only sleeping all the time, but then he was so forgetful and his memory would turn into that of like a child's. He would be like, for example, one day he was driving back from the doctor or to the doc. No, no, no. Back from the doctors in Northern Virginia. And we live in kind of like central Virginia. We, my grandparents, <laughs> not me. I always do that. I always slip into that. Sorry. So they, my grandparents, live in central Virginia. I live in Ireland. Um, they, he left and it had been maybe like three hours since my grandmother had heard from him and she was getting worried. And so she's calling him. And eventually he answers and he's like, hello. And he has this really strange kind of sing-songy boyish voice. And she's like, John? And it really freaked her out. Um, he was like, uh, I don't know where I am. And she was like, what is happening? Um, and so... Now, this is this is privilege in action. I'm just going to put it out there. But um, my grandfather was a metropolitan D.C. cop for like 20 years. He was in the Marines. Uh, he was a U.S. Marshal. Um, hang on a second. I'll have to stop this for a quick minute. Okay, never mind. It's okay. And so he he has a lot of cred, I guess, with uh, government officials and police officers, right? So he's a Marine and everything, right? So he, my grandmother called the cops in somewhere up there. Was it Arlington or Springfield or something? And she was like, I don't know what's happening to my husband. I've asked him to pull into this McDonald's and I just need you to escort him to the highway because he he's completely lost and he also seems to have lost his marbles a bit and there's nothing that I can do for him because you know he's all the way up there I'm all the way down here and I'm worried that if somebody doesn't get to him right now that something's gonna happen he's acting really erratic and strange so Essentially, the cops show up at the McDonald's and he's like, he's like a lost puppy. And that's really scary. Um, seeing a grown butt man um, act like a, like a child. He still knew how to drive and everything, but it was like his mind was somewhere else and that it was another part of him. And, uh, he, when the officers arrived, she told me that he kind of went straight into cadet mode. The last time he was a cadet when he was 16. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, sir. You know, um, and it freaked her out. And anyway, when he came home, she like double checked everything and looked at his, um, medicine because he was on so much medicine that he had like a checklist and they had to make sure that you know he had taken everything and it turns out that he didn't take something he didn't take one of those pills or shots or something I can't remember it's been a while 
But anyway, he had forgotten to do something, take one of them, and it turned him into a very young person at heart. <laughs> Um, so they told the doctor, you know, and, and the doctor readjusted some medication because, yeah, creepy. Have you ever known that to happen to somebody? Because it really freaked her out. Uh, okay, so he's good. Uh, what else is going on? That I can talk about. Hmm. Is that R the R's? Nope, there's one right there. Change colors while I think. Yeah, okay, that's all the R's. Cool. Hmm. What else is going on? So my hay fever's gone, finally. As predicted, it takes until mid-July for that to go away completely. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Sorry about that. And... So I'm really thankful for that because it's the worst. Let's try this color. Where is it? This one. Ooh. This might be a little difficult to see, but let's try this one. 992. Okay. I'm going to have to move the cover minder. I'm not used to them, to be honest. Um, but they are really cute. So, um, the garden is going really, really well. We have um, Cherokee tomatoes and cucumbers. And the cucumbers, I mean, I'm really looking forward to because I'm going to make some pickles. Yeah, Laura. Pickles. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love my homemade pickles. They're so yummy. So I'm going to change pins because I'm going to do this as a checkerboard. Um, and then the chickens are good. Uh, everybody is nice and healthy. The weather lately has been crap. Like, no offense, but like, I know I signed up for rainy weather, but not in the summer. <laughs> Not in the summer. So the last week, almost two weeks, has been completely rainy. And I mean drenched rainy. And like the temperature is perfect, but oof, you know, when it's raining, you don't want to do anything. You just want to stay indoors. Definitely not great for socializing. And maybe that's part of the problem that we've been having with our students. Maybe they're feeling a bit claustrophobic or something. I don't know. But, I digress. What else is going on here? I'm trying to think. We, all right, I might as well talk about this because I trust y'all. We are thinking about buying property. And that's a really big step for us. But I think, I'm thinking about it this way. There is a piece of, there are two pieces of property. One I like better than another, but they both have their positives. They are not finished. They need to have first fittings. They need to get flooring and heating and electricity, not to mention all the appliances and everything as well. But the upside of that is that we can put in what we want to the house and what we think is the best thing for the house because a lot of the houses here have things that we don't like for example they use natural gas for heating like the place we live in now and we would rather have a solid fuel stove with a back burner so that's like basically I don't know if you guys know what that is but imagine that you're a cooker is also your heating unit. So when you go to cook something, you throw in some wood and you catch it on fire. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> it bakes, it, it cooks things on top. You can boil water for tea, um, but it also heats your entire house in the winter. 
and you can turn the back boiler off so that you know in the summer you're not heating up your house but I like that because again uh, for you know what's happening at least for what's happening here in Ireland I think it would be a better move and also natural gas is getting more and more expensive I've seen the price increase by at least a euro since I moved to Ireland, a euro per liter, liter excuse me. It's, it's so expensive. We only get the minimum amount every, every time we make an order because, you know, it's like 450 euros for, I don't know, maybe, maybe um, a quarter of a tank. It's not a lot. So yeah, uh, I would much prefer the solid state, solid state, solid fuel stove with a back burner. So if we choose to get a property that isn't finished, that we have to finish ourselves, then we can choose all these options and finish it the way we want. Not to mention the style and the colors and all that stuff. The question is, how much more would it cost for us to fix up a house like that? But here's the long-term plan. The long-term idea is that we fix up the house and then we put it on the rental market. So we could make money from renting the property to a long-term renter, probably one of our friends, and then go abroad again for a few years. And if we did that, we could save up the money, use the money that for the rent to go towards the mortgage, plus whatever we save while we're teaching abroad and then when we decide to come back, we'll have a house. Most of the mortgage hopefully would be paid off by then. Uh, we could use whatever we've saved up to pay the rest off. And not only will we have more experience in our fields, but maybe we could even have master's degrees by then, you know, going to night school or something like that. And fingers crossed, there could be better positions for us here when we get back. I think that's probably the smartest plan that I've thought of uh, since I moved here. And I wish we had done it earlier. <laughs> but I have, I have a thing where I get really scared thinking about the future. Uh, it makes me nervous. Uh, I'm a go with the flow person, which is a good and a bad thing, I know. But I have always made the excuse, well, my husband is also a go with the flow person, where the decisions that, you know, he makes are quite slow to form. And it takes him many years to, to come to this kind of realization or not realization, but like actually saying, okay, I think that's something we should do. You know what I mean? So yeah, we're, um, we're at the stage of thinking about it, which is better than it was a few years ago. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So yeah, I'm really excited. The properties are really beautiful. One is very open it's, but it's at the end of a road. There's only one neighbor and the rest is all farm. It has a little bit of property. Like I think it's um, three quarters of an acre. It, it, um, it isn't very big, but it's pretty cheap as well. And with a little bit of fixing up, I think it could be a really, really nice property. 
In fact, it's at the stage where I think we could knock a wall and make it a little bit bigger if we wanted to. Which, if we did choose that one, I would absolutely root for because Irish homes are much smaller than American homes anyway. But it, like looking, we went to the property and we looked at it and it, it made me a bit claustrophobic. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, and then the second property I really like. It's a little more expensive and it's through an agent that I don't like. I don't trust him. But it has an open floor plan. It has an attic, uh, which could be a loft or it could be more bedrooms. And it has a beautiful bay window. Just like the other one, it has bay windows. Uh, but it has a shed, a garage attached as well, which could be a really nice space for my husband. He loves woodwork. And it has a lot more land. So it's got like an acre and a half, I think it was, or 1.6 acres, uh, which is quite a bit. And it is right in front of the ring fort that I was talking about. So we are thinking about the property situation and what we want to do, but I think it's a pretty good idea. What do you think? <laughs> Should we go for it? I'm not going to say that YouTube is influencing my decision, but maybe you guys can influence the decision. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, okay, YouTube news. I've left it to the last because I've noticed that a lot of people skip to the end of my videos because they think the end is the most juicy. And maybe you're right. Maybe I have a thing for uh, making the end of the video juicy. I want to apologize to everyone who has, and I want to apologize right now for all the glass sounds. Uh, bear with me again. Okay. He's just decided to do the recycling, which is awesome. Um, YouTube. Apologizing because I said I would do the mystery diamond painting next, and I'm not. But I couldn't pass this up. Um, when I contacted Diamond Art Club about this image, I did not expect them to make it into a diamond painting right away, and neither did I expect them to send it to me. Um, so I'm really, really honored that they, they did do that for me. And I think that it's only right that I, that I do this up for, for, for me and for them. They didn't ask me to, but I really want to do it and see how it's going to turn out because, well, I suggested it to them. I, I'm the one that, that wanted this so badly, you know? Um, and then... The mystery, it's its not that I don't want to do the mystery, um, but it'll be there. It'll be there when I'm finished. And trust me, this is going way, way faster than I expected. Um, and I'm only slowing it down by doing the grid. But I kind of like doing this uh, checkerboard when there's nothing else surrounding the diamonds and then I like using the multi-placer to fill in when I use squares because squares sometimes kind of like move around a little bit and on diamond art club glue you kind of have to put it down straight because the glue is so sticky <laughs> that it, it'll stay where you put it unless you pick it up again and replace it. So that's what's going on there. Uh, what else is happening? I've had a lot of unboxings lately um, because they all just came in at once. So if, if people out there are upset that I don't have a schedule where I upload a certain kind of video on a certain kind of day, uh, all I'm going to say is there are other channels out there that do that, but I'm not one of them. I'm going to upload what I have when I have it, and I'm not going to apologize because I have a real life, as I've said before, so haters going to hate, but 
I'm so, so happy that there are people that think that my opinion is worth sending, sending things out. Sorry, podcasts again. Sending things out for me to, to try or to unbox for them. Um, I, it's, it's still very new and um, exciting to me. Um, so thank you. Also, a big thank you to everybody this past week who made orders on my Etsy shop. I have sent out all the orders, bar one that was made on Friday. So all of those have been sent. And I have changed the snack a little bit. I've changed it to gummies because they don't melt as far as I know. If they're melting, please let me know. <laughs> but I didn't want to send chocolate because... I didn't want to keep sending chocolate because I was afraid that, you know, it's it's summer, so it's going to melt for, for pretty much anybody in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and that's, that's why I chose not to send chocolate. Um, other things. Okay, upcoming, upcoming video ideas and things. I just received frames in the mail, and I don't know if I talked about this before, uh, but I'll try to ch touch on it briefly here, and then I really should probably go and render this video so I can upload it. But uh, I received frames from a company on AliExpress, and they're the kind that you put behind the canvas, you stick the canvas to it, you roll it around, and it makes... Um, a frame and I can't really explain it can't really show you hang on I can show you oh, I, oh. okay they look like this yeah and basically you pull this back stick it down and then you pull it like that and the tension will hold the painting taut yeah I hope I'm making sense with that but anyway, I, I had received them a few weeks ago. I think it was like a month ago. Um, custom made for my diamond paintings and my diamond art clubs. And they sent me the wrong size. So I ordered again and asked them if they would send me the right size, which they did. So now I can frame Friend of the Maidens which I've been wanting to frame for a really long time and put in my bedroom. So really, really excited about that. I want to make a video on it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to film me doing it without it being incredibly awkward. <laughs> I'll do my best. I will do my best, but I'll be doing that tomorrow because I'm just too busy today and I got to work. So... I guess that's pretty much it. Let me just bring you guys back a little bit. Yeah, here we go. Move the tray. And put some light, shine light on the subject. So here we go. That's how far I've gotten. This is the third day that I've worked on this painting, so it's actually going quite fast. Uh, but this is all the background. <laughs> So I've only really gotten to here on the canvas. Can you see that? So this far out of all of that. Um, I am really looking forward to getting to her face. Uh, I will keep you all posted. I think the idea is that because I'm working on this in the living room and I'm working on the ever moment in here now is that I will roll this backward like so and then I will keep this rolled up like this uh, which I have already done and that way I will have the whole the whole canvas will be on the easel at the same time basically I don't find it very um, damaging at all to to use like to keep the canvas in this position and diamond paint on it, it doesn't hurt or bend or cause problems with the glue. So I'm going to continue to do to do it in this way. 
and then when it's you know when it's finally finished I don't know but it's so beautiful there oh I can't wait to get to the curly cues and everything as well. I know that some people said that it was too big for their taste, and I totally understand. It is huge. It is almost as tall as me, <laughs> and I am a tall person. Um, but, yeah, and I was thinking, I was asking Mrs. Coffee, you know, what should I do with it when I'm finished? Because I don't really know what I, where to put it, you know what I mean? And she suggested to bring it to the library, and I think that's a great idea. I think I will. Either the library or maybe the local um, creche, which is a play school or what do you call it, preschool, daycare. You know, maybe maybe kids there would appreciate it, and maybe the teachers would like it, you know. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway. I know we're not in America, so I don't know if Pocahontas is necessarily the best um, option for those kids, but it's a gift. A gift is a gift, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you all enjoyed this little personal catch-up whip and chat. Thank you for being here with me and, and watching me get through this little bit. And the next time I see you, maybe I'll be in her hair. <laughs> Anyway, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Have a great upcoming week, and I will see you all very soon. Take care, guys. Bye.